Uh, okay, so uh, here we'll just do a short uh, discussion on the cycloid and what different parameters uh, one can consider when we study the equation of, of motion of how the path of this specific uh, curvature, which is shown here in red, how this one can uh, can develop. The general idea, it was well, not, the, not the general idea, but this was first posed as a question by Bernoulli sometimes in the end of the uh, 1600s. And uh, by that time, several mathematicians answered to the challenge. And the challenge was to be able to identify what is the shortest time needed to go from point A to point B. This was the original question. So, uh, if the only force was the force of the gravitational force, so the first possible path could be this, or it could be some other path like this, or if we need more speed, this one could also be considered. So the question was to identify the one which has the shortest, uh, the fastest path in time. And in terms of the fastest path in time, we see this one in the application of optics, because we know that if we have here vacuum, or if we have here air, and here we have water, then the question is, how can we go from this point P1 to point P2 with the shortest time? So now, uh, the path is never a straight line, but it's rather uh, uh, a path follows like this, and the idea to find this is that we want to optimize, so if, if this length is L1, okay, the, the perpendicular length from point P1 to the interface, which is uh, separating the region, which is separating the air from the water. So this is L1. Here we can determine L2. If this is L2, then we know that here the variable which will be changing is the following. So let's assume that this is an angle. Uh, theta 1, and this is an angle which is theta 2, then the time of travel is going to be the following. It's going to be P is equal to L1 over cosine theta 1, okay? This is this distance. So this distance of travel, P, it's L divided, sorry, L1 divided by cosine theta 1 times 1 over the speed of light, okay? Plus the other constant L2 divided by cosine uh, theta 2 times 1 over the speed of light divided by the index of refraction. So we try to optimize this problem as a function of theta 1 and theta 2. So if we take the derivative of this, so if we do this d time over d theta 1 and we equal this to 0, the solution because this is how we find the extreme, extremal points. The solution for theta 1, we insert it here and we find the time, and then we have also found what are these angles uh, for which uh, the angle which is going to define the path of the light rather than having a straight line going like this. So, a similar problem with the shortest time is, was also posed by Bernoulli, and the question being was this how can we go from point A to point B? with the shortest time if the only force applied is a gravitational force. The answer, it was provided by many mathematicians, and uh, Newton submitted this uh, solution with no name on it, and everybody knew that it was Newton based on the originality of the answer. Fine, let's now see what the solution that they provided, what it was in principle. Imagine if you have a, a circle, and you stick it on the ceiling, and you rotate it. So this one is then forced to move uh, along a path on the ceiling. And a fixed point on the circle, as it's going to travel around, is going to leave a trail. And this trail is the equation of, the, of this cycloid. Okay? And now imagine here, this, this circle in blue here. Uh, this point here that we hear for the moment, this before some time, it was right at the starting point, at point zero or point O. But some time later, so from the initial moment, time has passed. So at any time t, we have an angle phi, which is this angle here. And this angle phi, it appears in these equations. 
So the y-axis, let's assume that the y-axis is pointing positive downwards, and the x-axis is pointing in this direction. So the coordinates of x and y will be as follows. And uh, when phi is equal to pi, which means that when this uh, blue circle, when this point of contact was here, that means that phi was zero. But x, when phi is equal to pi, is going to be the following. It's going to be here we have, uh, what is this? This is uh, phi minus sine phi. So x is going to be sine pi is equal to zero. So if this is equal to zero, then here we have that x is equal to r pi, is equal to r pi. And then uh, for the y, we have on this side, we insert here cosine of pi, it's equal to minus one. So we get here y is equal to one minus minus one. We get that the y from pi equal to pi is equal to r times one minus cosine pi. We know that cosine pi is minus one. So finally, we get one minus minus one, and this is two r. And this is also expected because the, at this, at the lowest point, this blue circle is going to rotate with one point fixed on the ceiling. It's going to be down here. Okay. So it looks like point A is the coordinates of x and y when the n of phi is equal to pi, so this object came here. Then we can find the point B, which is this other end of, of, the, of the curvature. That point B, it, it has the same expressions of the equations for x and y, only that the pi, this angle phi will be 2 pi. But in principle, this is uh, how this progresses. Now, this has very interesting properties. People have always tried to approach this one from, from different perspectives. And it's a good thing to do because if you, uh, if you analyze this, the motion or the equation of the cycloid from a specific perspective, you always, always learn uh, new things. For example, here, if this is the radius, this is also the radius because this is totally the, the diameter. And uh, if we integrate over x and y to calculate what the length of this path is equal to, we find that the arc length from O to A, this is equal to 4R. Okay. So it looks like if we stretch if we stretch here, we can separate, so this whole path, we need uh, four times the radius, okay? That's something uh, interesting. And uh, we also notice that the total area, if we calculate the area that we have down here, is it's equal to the sort of area, which is, let's consider this one point C, okay? So the area which is inside the object, Maybe this is not the best notation between the points C or A. Uh, this is going to be 3 over 2 pi r squared. So we know that half of the surface area, this is equal to pi r squared. So if we denote the surface area S, which is capital S, and this is pi r squared over 2, if we just look at this, at this half, this is S, and then the rest of the area, which is between the, this uh, red line, which we can try to notice again, so between this red line here, so this is the cycloid, and keeping this out, and then the, top, the total area here is equal to 2s. Okay, so we find some interesting uh, relationships here. We also uh, notice that the path x from point O to C, this is equal to pi r, which is half of the perimeter of the of the circle. Okay, so this is pi r. Good. So this is how the problem is is defined, and these are the relevant uh, relationships. Now, other important quantities that can be that can be derived are are several, and in order to get all the possible equations, is that. Well, one, let's try to see one interesting uh, relation, relationship is that the velocity, if we draw here a B, okay, so if we have a B and uh, we let this B 
to slide down a piece of wire. Okay, so imagine now you get a wire, you make it in the shape of a cycloid, and then you get a bead, and you put it here, and you let it go down. And uh, what is, uh, we can analyze the total uh, motion of this bead, but what is impressive is that if we have a bead which is in, in uh, let me try to draw it here. So let's assume that we have a relatively smaller cycloid. If we put here a black bead at this point and a red bead here, and then if we draw them at the same time, they are going to end up at the bottom at the same time. Okay? So time is a constant variable for a cycloid, which means that you can draw an object from wherever you want, they will always end up, so if we put here another bead in blue color, then the blue will end up later on at the same point. Okay? So it looks like the cycloid has an important parameter, which is equal to time. So time is a constant. Assuming that the only force is the force of gravity. And if this is the case, if uh, the only force is the force of gravity, then we can, using the relationship of so these are some uh, parameters. This is the relationships of MGH is equal to 1 over 2. MV squared, we find that the velocity at any point is equal to 2GH. In this case, the height is denoted as Y. So this can be equal to the square root of 2GY. So it looks like at any position for phi, we can immediately denote that the velocity of an object along this path and the velocity will be tangent to the to the position where uh, where we are on the on the cycloid. The velocity is always written as two g y. Good. So we have three important uh, parameters for now, and the other important relationships that we can construct is is the, the following. So let's assume for a moment that this is a, a diameter. So we look at these triangles which are created here, and let's try to read what we see here. Again, the path in red is the path of the cycloid. Then, uh, at, that, at this moment, the circle in blue, let me try, I can try to enhance this one. The circle in blue, which is shown here, at this instant, the lowest point is down here. And then it's going at this point, the fixed point which is drawing the cycloid is this one here. And the, the angle with which the original circle has rotated is this angle phi. And then if we assume draw a right angle triangle, if phi and alpha are complementary such that phi plus alpha, this is equal to phi over 2, we figure out that this is phi, this is alpha. Then, if this is 19, this is also 19, which makes this one uh, phi also. This makes this alpha, then this is phi, this is also phi. Okay. So we know that we have value phi, it appears to be pretty much in a lot of places, which might make easier our analysis in what we want to acquire. And then, for a moment, we can uh, look the, if this is the diameter, or let's consider this is 2r, if this is 2r, this sign is 2r times sine phi. Okay? And then this is the hypotenuse of, uh, of this smaller triangle here, which means that this side here, this side here, is the hypotenuse times sine phi. So that this side is 2r sine phi, sine squared phi. So, and this one, 2r sine squared phi, is in fact y. Okay, so this y here, it can also, we can even write this one as uh, 2r sine squared phi. Let me have a look at this one. And probably this was clear from scratch. Let's see for a moment. Would this uh, if we use the properties of sine and cosine, we know that uh, sine squared is 
1 minus cosine squared, but we can we can try to, to figure out, we can work this one out for a moment, and uh, but in principle we have we have this relationship, and then so we observe that we have this y is equal to two uh, r sine squared phi. This is the relationship, and then we can we can do the following. We can have here one over. 2r, this is equal to sine squared phi over y. Okay. So we know this here, that we have another constant of, uh, of the cycloid. So the first constant of the cycloid, it was time. And we hear about the constants that appear in the motion of a specific uh, object or in the dynamics of a certain system, because that helps us to understand the basic principles that are in the system. So everyone is invited to have a look at even not only to count the number of, of the constants, but also to construct the relationships between these constants. So here, this is one constant. We have T, and 1 over 2R for sure is a constant, because uh, the R is the radius of this initial circle. But what is impressive is the sine square of phi divided by Y, this appears to be another constant. So we can add this here. So we get here sine squared of phi over y. This is another important uh, constant. Now, what is uh, what I'm asking you? What I'm asking in the homework is is the following: try to identify. So I want uh, you to draw to find the time as a function of r. T as a function of R, find this one. Which means this means to, this means that uh, you may have to uh, to solve this problem for a series of different values of R. So if the R is small, which means that as a test you can have R any value which goes let's say one centimeter up to uh, one hundred. Uh, something you just see what the curve is, it doesn't have to be, but choose a range, okay? a range over which you can observe a, a change. Then uh, the next thing that you are asked to find is to figure out what is phi as a function of time. How will this phi change as a function of time? So, how can we do this? Is that if the time is a function of r, okay, you may try to find uh, a relationship. So as you change, uh, so uh, when, you, when you're trying to solve the problem, when you see how the phi is progressing, how the time is progressing, you can immediately draw the graph from, uh, from there. And in order to do this one, you can approach this one differently, but I guess you may, you may write something like before, phi is equal to, let me find a better uh, term, so for phi equal to zero, using steps of, let's say, 10 to the power minus 3, the step can be even smaller. So you can even, okay, so you can improve, make things finer and finer gradually, uh, but let's assume that you are making these much steps, phi, and let the angle go up to 3.14, okay? So this means that we want to scan what is happening with the relevant parameters up to angle phi, which is this point here. Okay, and uh, this is the case, and then we need to, uh, here we have a counter, which is equal to zero, then you can set here a counter, which is equal, uh, you add this one each time, and then here you have the x will be equal we have this expression, so we have the correct expression for x, which is going to be equal to r phi minus sine phi. Then we have the coordinate for y, so the y1 will be equal to r 1 minus cosine phi. So we got, we got the y. Then we can identify what is delta x. Okay? 
what is dx, how much the x changed. dx is equal to x down minus x down minus 1. And we can identify also y similarly, y down the difference between two subsequent uh, uh, values for y. Then we can identify what is the path. So if we are somewhere here from this point to this point, we have dy is this length, dx is this length. But the length of this path, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which is stated like the ds is equal to the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. So we found the ds, so we are finding all the relevant parameters. And uh, now that you can find the ds for any small in increment in the angle phi, you can add up all these dss and find the complete length of this uh, uh, side, or of the path of the cycloid, or of the path over which the bead, or the ruaza, will uh, travel through if we drop it like this. Now, if this is the ds, then the next important parameter that we can uh, try to determine is the, let's have a look, what can we find next? We can, so actually the moment we know why, we can also determine what is the velocity. The velocity is always equal to 2 gy, okay? So using the contribution of energy, so we get the 2 gy. And again, this is velocity count. So we count, uh, so uh, this velocity will gradually change, right? So we are moving in discrete step steps, and we are putting the disk increasing in discrete step diagonal of phi, we are gradually changing the y, which means that we are gradually changing the velocity, and then we can find the time, which is going to be equal to ds count, ds count, divided by the velocity count. Okay, so we have to divide what were the last uh, change in the ds over the velocity there. So this is the time, between two small intervals, and then we can find the total time, which is we can write this one total time, is equal to pt plus t, plus t count. Okay? And pt total time, we can assign this one for the formula as a zero. So uh, from here, it looks like we can, we can find a lot of relevant parameters using the equations which we already know, but uh, what we are asking is to find what is the time, which is a constant for this motion, as a function of radius, and uh, what is the angle, and draw the graph. So the graph will tell you how uh, many, uh, it will tell you the essence. Draw also the phi as a function of r, and you are always strongly suggested we even check what is the angle of phi as a function of r, okay? And uh, numerically, it would be impressive, so since you have all the options here, so you have the phi, you have the y, right here after this line, you can always have a look, you can substitute everything, because you can denote, you can include this sine square y over y, okay? So plot all of these, whatever this ratio is, you can call this one ratio R, capital R, and then you can plot it in the end. If we are assuming that this is a constant, most probably you are going to get the constant value of this R as a uh, function of angle phi, because this is the value. So, and then one final thing, which was my initial statement in the homework, is the following. So, uh, we mentioned before that the arc length from O to A is equal to 4R, it's here. Okay? Now, separate uh, this path into four equal distances. That's one, that's two, that's three. So now, if the total arc length is 4R, this means that this is R, this other one is also R, okay, and so on, RR. Now, I wanted 
I want you to find out what is the angle here, which is beta 1, beta 2, then uh, this is, so this are called this R, this is also R here, the part in red, this is also R and R. So if you want to find what is beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, which extend over this arc length, okay, and uh, the final angle, beta 4. Identify these four uh, angles. Now, uh, another thing that I can add here is the, the following. So, we observe here that sine square phi over y is a constant. So, we are talking about this one here. And then, uh, we start thinking, and we try, and it's good for all of, all of you to think why this is a constant. Or then, uh, these two quantities, they continue, continuously change, but it looks like, if we look at this side, so the square of the sine over, so this is square, uh, quadratic expression with respect to the sine, okay, so the sine of phi, and this is linear in y, okay, fine, but then let's have a look here on this side, this is 1 over 2r, what does 1 over 2r mean? Now, if we think, uh, what is 2R? 2R, it's just, it has units of 1 over meter, okay? The unit is 1 over meter. So, what could this be? And the possible interpretation could be the following. So, let's remove these. Let's assume, we, well, let me say it uh, directly. So, this 1 over 2R, this can represent the probability density probability density where to find an object. And uh, the idea that I came to this conclusion was this, that when I draw this one initially, this equation, I wrote this one like this, one over the square root of 2r, and for sure this is a constant. But then this has units of one over the square root of meters. Sometimes, writing things in different ways might uh, uh, keep awake the intuition of how to construct different relationships. And in this case, this also happened with me, they just reminded me that the unit of 1 over square root of n is the unit of the probability density of a particle that moves in one dimension. And this is this concept, this is, uh, uh, this is a concept which comes from the from the quantum mechanics, and uh, we know that there is a quantity which is called the wave function, and this wave function, this in the general sense, this can be a complex number, but the only physical reality is that the square of this wave function, this is the probability density. And another thing that we know is that if we integrate this probability density over dx, this is going to be equal to 1. So this finds the integral of the probability density dx, we find uh, equal to 1. And this means that if we have a, a wire and we have a bead, okay, imagine now that you have a bead and you put this bead on this wire, so it's, a, it's like a coin, you make a hole in the coin, you put, you put this uh, coin with a hole in the middle, you move it across a wire, and this is the one dimensional motion. And uh, here, the dx, this is measured in meters, and the, the function, the unit of the uh, wave function is 1 over the square root of meter. So that's when I thought that this, is, uh, this has to do with probability density function. But it looks like it's a probability density uh, which, is, which is, is a constant, okay? But where is it constant? So is it... Could this be the probability where to find an object that is sliding down over time? Could this be, so that's, that was my first intention. And then, uh, let's assume that we have not uh, a bead or a coin with a hole in the middle that moves over a wire, but let's assume that we have a ball that is inside a room, it's on the floor of the room, and you hit this ball, and we want to know what is the probability, uh, how, what is the unit or the probability density function for a ball that can hit 
the walls and can come like this, like this, like this. So in that case, here, we will have a function which is phi squared, but we will have to integrate over dx dy, and this is going to be equal to 1. And then we figure out that the unit of, of this psi, in this case, this will have unit of 1 over meter. I'm talking about the wave function. And 1 over meter, the square, this will be 1 over meter square times meter meter, we get the unit of 1. In this case, for the one dimensional case, the unit, it will be 1 over the square root of meter. But this is for the one dimensional case, this is for the two dimensional case. Now, uh, the question is not yet answered, which was this. What could this represent if this is a probability density function? Now, let's imagine for a moment, if I'm going from, from point A to point B, allow me to take this out. So if we're going, if I'm going from point A to point B, so I'm going from point A to point B, and I'm moving with constant velocity. What is the probability that I'm found between any of these two points? Okay? Now, the probability it's going to be 1 over L, okay? Because if I have a different C, two points from point A to point C, where the distance is 2L, then the probability that I can be found at any point over the second, uh, second length, it's going to be equal to, so let me write some probability density, but it will be proportional to 1 over 2L. Okay. So, so far, so good. And then if you worry about whether this is true or not, we can always do the following. This probability, which is 1 over 2L, we can integrate over dx from 0 to 2L, and uh, the answer will be equal to, it will be equal to 1. But now, good. Assuming this is true, what, what probability is constant over this whole path. Okay. Probably this is my second or probably the third time I'm repeating this, but uh, it looks like some in some coordinates, or and these coordinates, it could be either x, it could be the y, it could be the phi, any one of these, or it, would, it can be even uh, r phi or r to some phi. Probably uh, any one of these is changing gradually, okay? So here, in this probability, this would be actually 1 over L if I'm walking with a constant velocity. So if I'm walking from point A to point B with a constant velocity, then the probability is 1 over L, okay? Because and if we plot this one, if you plot this probability density as a function of position, let's try to draw this one here, we could get the following. So that's the probability. Here, this is as a function of x, and the probability here, one is somewhere over there, is going to be equal to 1 over L. Okay, so the probability is always the same if I want to go from point 0 to point L, or from point A to point B. That's good. The probability is always the same. Now imagine for a moment that I walk uh, somewhere, I meet someone, I have a chat with someone, and I spend a lot of time. And then the probability density at this point would increase a lot at this point. But then I start running, okay, probably I'm late. And now since then I start running, maybe the probability is going to drop very fast. Because if somebody wants to take a picture of me here, uh, and if they, if they uh, take the picture only once, the probability to get the picture with me walking, it will decrease drastically, okay? in this case. In the case when I meet with someone, the probability of me to be found somewhere here is way higher. So which means that if somebody is trying to, and if we do this experiment hundreds of times, a person sitting here trying to observe a specific position between point A and point B, would have a higher probability to catch me but someone else, which is a little further, has a smaller probability to catch me. So this is the probability density. Okay, so again, 
where in this curvature uh, we can have a constant probability. So, if something like this is really true, over which axis can we, so this axis is, is in blue, over which axis we'll have a, a constant? So, this can be the y, okay, and then we can have another axis which can be uh, in a different color, which is pi. So that's a, a good question. So the probability over which one of these three uh, could be a constant, if this ever makes any sense. Actually, uh, without intending to give the answer right now, we can we observe that they, we see the phi here. Probably, probably we get the probability density function, which is a constant over phi. So as the phi is changing, maybe uh, it's something which has to do with the time spent of some bead over a specific range of phi. So here, when we draw initially this one for descriptive reasons, and we said that if somebody is trying to catch a picture of someone walking between point A and point B, and that would represent the, the probability of catching that one if they're randomly trying to, to, uh, to click the shutter, uh, then here, probably, uh, we may have a constant, so if y, we know what is the range of y, or the range of x in blue, it's anything from 0 to pi r, okay? The y, which we draw here in black, the y, it's a range which goes from 0 to 2 r, okay? Or so this is a small r, and the phi is going to be uh, a variable which is going to change from 0 to pi. So, the probability density is something which is going to count the probability to be found at any p5 or at any d1 or at any dx. Okay? So, try to think about this problem in this perspective. And we started all this discussion, which in the end, this was a little, uh, this can be inside the scope of several uh, individuals that want to watch this problem from different perspectives, so it was not a waste of time. And you can always uh, go back and, and uh, go to the point where, which interests you the most. But as we discussed here, looking carefully to constants of motion, or to constants of the, yes, constants of motion, it's an important uh, approach, which is also intuitive, which can then be used to derive complex mathematics that can happen in this case. Okay, so this was uh, a, a treatment, probably a slightly different treatment that you can hear about the uh, cycloid.